Since the 2022 World Cup ended, the men's side of the U.S. soccer space has been in disarray. From parents leveraging blackmail because of their son's playtime at a professional level to a six-month candidate search that has brought the head coach position back to where it started, we've just endured some of the darkest days in U.S. soccer history. And the worst part is, is that it came after an honestly successful World Cup stint. But now we're here in the summer of 2023, dealing with a million different opinions about one man. And that's Greg Berhalter's return to coach the United States men's national team. Typically, I'll be straight up. I don't like talking about Berhalter on this channel because I know how radical certain parts of the U.S. soccer fan base can be. But now with this designated IMO series, there's no better place for me to discuss my opinion on this matter. So, should U.S. soccer have rehired Greg Berhalter to guide the USMNT to the 2026 World Cup? To start, I want to go back to the beginning, or at least briefly discuss what happened at the World Cup, because there's a lot of meat to this story that lies there. The events we know include Berhalter telling Gio Reyna before the tournament that his minutes would be limited. In response to that, Gio Reyna probably discussed the issue with his parents. And reportedly, Reyna conducted himself very poorly after the fact in training and preparation when the USMNT landed in Qatar. This all led to a team vote where the idea of booting Gio off the World Cup squad was being discussed. In the end, Gio's time was extremely limited in the tournament, but he remained with the squad throughout the whole thing. I'm sure you've heard all of those details, and that's why I'm just kind of skimming through this part. Eventually, after the tournament came to an end, Greg Berhalter made comments about this situation and the unnamed player in an off-the-record leadership meeting, which eventually turned his comments to the public. After that, people quickly concluded that the player in question was in fact Gio Reyna, and after that, I mean, shit just hit the fan. It came out that Gio Reyna's parents, Claudio and Daniel Reyna, made several calls to people within the USMNT front office to bash Berhalter. They cited many issues with him and the treatment of their son, as well as attempting to blackmail the Berhalter family with the story from their past. Through U.S. Soccer's investigation, we discovered this very terrifying quote from Daniel Reyna, which, in my opinion, sums up their motives altogether. To an unnamed U.S. soccer official, she said, Once this tournament is over, I can make one phone call and give one interview, and his cool sneakers and bounce passes will be gone. I mean, pretty damning evidence if I say so for myself. For those unaware, this information Daniel Reyna was threatening to release was about an incident 30 years ago where Greg Berhalter had a physical altercation with his current wife, Rosalind. And although domestic violence is something that we should not push aside, I think it's very clear that both Greg and Rosalind worked on each other and were able to move past this incident themselves. And Daniel Reyna had no right to expose this information all because of her son not playing as many minutes as she would have wanted in the World Cup. That's a whole other discussion though, but back to the current topic, this information caused US soccer to suspend any contract renewal talks they were having with Greg at the time, and they hired an independent team to conduct an investigation on the matter. In the end of that investigation, Austin and Bird LLP concluded that there were no wrongdoings with that Burhalter situation, and that if US soccer wanted to pursue him as their next head coach, they were free to do so. And that brings us up to speed to where, for the past six months, U.S. soccer has been conducting their search for who would coach the USMNT on their way to the 2026 World Cup. In this process, U.S. soccer hired a new sporting director in Matt Crocker, who had previous experience with England as well as Southampton in the Premier League. Crocker would lead the way on the head coach hiring, and with no inside information or previous relationship with Greg Berhalter, the search was wide open for the next coach. Reportedly, 10 different candidates were highly considered for this role, two of which being Jesse Marsh, who looked to be close to a deal for a little bit, and Patrick Vieira. The general idea from USMNT supporters was that it was time for a new coach to take the reins. Personally, I think Berhalter did an okay job at the 2022 World Cup. For me, with such a young squad heading in, my goal was to make it out of the group stage and be competitive, and I think we did that. I think in the World Cup, the USMNT shocked people with their level. Against Wales and England, I mean, we were the far superior team, and I think the Netherlands game was unfortunately just one step above us. But that doesn't mean I think Greg did a bad job at the tournament. 
Yes, I agree, his in-game management was poor. And when I saw Jordan Morris and Shaq Moore coming off the bench late in games to change things up, I was not happy. But overall, I do call the 2022 World Cup a success. But that doesn't mean I think Burhalter should have stayed in that position. I'm someone who greatly subscribes to the notion that a manager should only coach one World Cup cycle, no matter how they perform. I think after one cycle, the team should get a fresh voice in the locker room, and that's how I felt with Greg. It was perfect timing too, because his contract was up after the World Cup, and I think it would have been a perfect time for him to leave the job at a high point. But then all of the rainous stuff came out, and that USMNT head coach position was put in limbo because they couldn't re-sign Burhalter if they wanted to, yet they also couldn't move on right away because of that pending investigation. Now, while this was going on, Christian Pulisic came out with an exclusive interview with ESPN where he stated he would like to see Burhalter return to the team. Sticking to the theme that it's not your or my job to appoint the next coach, if it were Greg Burhalter, you'd be reasonably content that you've got a talented coach, a reliable man, a winning coach and somebody able to take the gains you all and he have made and push forward. I'm a, I'm not, I won't put words in your mouth, but is that what you would feel? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about it. I think the strides that we've taken in recent years with him appointed, I think, has been has been evident. I think it's it's quite clear. Um, so that's yeah, that's what I'll say. For me, this quote is massive coming from Pulisic because this came out in the thick of this controversy. Unlike interviews we'll talk about in a second, at this moment, Pulisic had no idea what the outcome of the investigation would be and if Greg even had a chance of returning. I think this quote and the whole interview as a whole came from the heart and I truly believe what he's saying here. This is one aspect of Burhalter that I think is arguably irreplaceable. The way he's been able to bring in all these different guys together speaks volumes. In football, I mean, we see a lot of moments where managers lose the dressing room or have fallouts with key players, but Greg appears to have a very good hold on the culture of this squad. Now, even if you look at the Gio Reyna fallout, it's not like the players sided with Gio. No, from reports, everyone noticed Gio's faults in the preparation for the World Cup and demanded him to pick it up. This situation would have been a great time for players to overthrow Burhalter if they wanted, but they were committed to the cause, and I think that's a great example of what Burhalter has done in the off-the-pitch perspective. And once again, Pulisic touched on this in that exclusive interview during the height of these controversies. So I would say uh, Greg Burhalter is someone who has grown a lot on me over the years. I think I've learned a lot from him. Um, I think I've grown so much as a player. I think it's underappreciated what, <clears throat> excuse me, what he's done to create that environment that I was talking about that was so special within that team. I think he's, I think he's helped a lot of players improve in a lot of ways. I think he's, I think he's very passionate about the sport. I think he's done some incredible things. I have to say, um, in a short amount of time, where. There were times, there were moments when, when he benched me and I wanted to kill the guy. I was, I was, you know, I was, hated him. I was so angry. But then next game comes along and then I find myself in a better place. And, and the way he handled a lot of situations, I, I have to give him, I have to give him a lot of credit. I think he created a, a team that not only um, was, you know, probably the best brotherhood family that I've, you know, unit that I've been a part of but also on the football side of things when it came down to it in a World Cup time, I think, I think you could say a lot of people were impressed with, with what we did out on the field as well. So I will say that. As we've got closer and closer to this deal being reached with Burhalter, though, we've heard more and more from current players backing the former head coach to return. You know, these past few games, Greg has really, you know, kept us together. Greg, BJ, the whole staff um, has really kept us as a unit. And I think that's what, that's what, you know, is our, is our, you know, main focal point is that we're we're definitely a family, and no one can take that away. And you know, Greg really helped us uh, form this type of uh, you know relationship with each other. So I mean, yeah, he was a huge, huge uh, important part to this team. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully he comes back. Some people think that at this point, these players knew it was a possibility Greg could return. Therefore, why not say nice things about him to the press? Others also point out that only the guys who started under Burhalter are saying things. To which I say, you're dumb. Of course, the key players in this squad are the ones who have things to say about Greg. 
Along with that, I want to hear from those key players in the squad. The opinions of guys that I think are important to the team, such as Pulisic, Weya, Adams, Musa, so on and so on. I mean, those are opinions that mean the most to me. And just to beat this horse dry, if you're subscribing to the idea that only these starters have said good things about Greg, then are you saying that under a new coach, you don't think the guys like Weya and Pulisic should or be deserving to be in that starting 11? I'd hope not. And now let's look at the other side of things, because of course there are guys who probably are not happy to see Berhalter back. For this, I'm looking at guys like Ricardo Pepe and Zach Steffen, who are two guys that were left off the World Cup roster by Greg, and guys that Greg has admitted to not speaking with since the World Cup. I'm wondering if you can confirm that you have not yet spoken with, first of all, Gio Reyna since the World Cup, but also a few prominent guys who were left off the roster, including Zach Steffen and Ricardo Pepe. Um, I have not spoken with them. Um, and, you know, like the Geo case, I think there's a number of, of individuals that you, you want to speak with. And ideally what you have is, um, you know, alignment with everybody. And all we're doing is, is trying to be great together. And it needs, um, you know, the relationships to be good. It needs players to be, um, you know, focused on, on what we're doing. And, um, you know, there'll certainly be time for that in, in these upcoming months. For Pepe, I think this very candid interview shows us a lot. After the Nations League semifinal over Mexico, Pepe was told about the reports that Greg would be returning as head coach. And this is how he responded. I want to ask you your feelings. There were reports during the match that it's been confirmed by The Athletic that Greg Berhalter has been rehired as head coach. What are your feelings on that? Oh, I have no idea, to be honest. You know, now that you're telling me, I have no idea, you know, on the news. But, you know, I have no idea, to be honest. It's just something that, you know, we haven't talked about. But, you know, we just finished the game. So it's time. I think it's time to celebrate this win. All right. Congratulations, Canada next. Yeah, that was a bit hard to watch. And I feel bad for the guy. Obviously, there are things that need to be worked on with Pepe and Greg, and being thrown that question out of nowhere must have been hard for Pepe to sort out his thoughts. But I think with the surprise of that question, we get a little look into the truth some players hold about this return. Now, along with Pepe and Stefan, obviously the relationship with Gio Reyna is going to be very important for Greg to figure out. How do you make steps to repair a relationship that went so south? This is why, in my opinion, Greg shouldn't have been brought back. I think there's just too much between those guys and the parents of each of those families that it'll be hard for it to ever be totally normal again. What sucks too is that Gio has the potential to be a huge player for this USMNT. I mean, just look at his performances in the Nations League. The success of Burhalter's return lies on how he manages the dynamics with Gio. And also what's really weird about this whole thing too is that Greg Berhalter will not be taking charge of the Gold Cup with the USMNT in these following weeks. Instead, the tournament will be left to BJ Callahan. Is it because they don't want to put pressure on Greg right away if he can't win this tournament? Or are they telling the truth when they say that Greg and Crocker will be spending the next few months working together to create the correct path forward for this program? That's up in the air and that's all up for your interpretation. But to wrap things up, what exactly are my thoughts on this situation? Well, there's two parts to how I look at this. One, I would have loved to see Burhalter leave it after his contract ended after the World Cup. But I also would have hated to see Reyna's win and get him fired because of the bullshit that they threw into the mix. I'm glad that Burhalter has made it through to the other end of this horrible situation, but I do wish the USMNT went on a different path with their head coach. I think we should really value what Greg has done and what he can do with the culture building in that locker room. But I do think that the on the field, the USMNT would have been a lot better with a fresh idea on how to guide the team in matches. But with that said, I am actively rooting for Burhalter. I wish we took a different route, but I'm perfectly okay with Greg continuing in the role. I think we're only going to get better, and even with Greg behind the wheel, I think our players have what it takes to continue pushing what U.S. soccer means. So, in the comments, let me know what you think of Greg Berhalter returning to coach the USMNT. Keep it respectful, but let me know your opinion. Disagreements are good as long as we just want the best for the national team. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.